Hello and welcome to my channel. We're doing some work today. Check this out. Welcome back and thanks for being here. My name is Scott and my daughter and I took a drive to South Carolina to visit Bond Performance. Uh, we're here with Jake and he is installing an intercooler on my daughter's Mark 7 Golf. I think it's a launch edition, so 2015. And our order is a little out. Most people don't start with an intercooler, but she's been deployed for, what, seven months and just started buying parts. And Jake happened to have a, uh, an intercooler laying around. He doesn't usually stock parts. And so that was her first purchase. So she was kind of lucky to be able to find one in stock. And normally he sends these things out with directions on how to install. But I mentioned in my exhaust video that I like to drive and meet the people who make things for my car. So we decided to come on down here and have Jake install it for her. So she's meeting Jake and uh, his neighbors behind us and we're going to put this thing in. Now, I'm not going to do a, a how-to video. Jake tells me there's three or four of them out there on YouTube already, so I'll, um, I'll link one up here somewhere and go check that out if you want to see how-to. Um, just yesterday, she installed a Bilstein suspension, coilovers. I don't know which ones. I'll, I'll put the name up here in the corner so you can check those out. They're kind of common, I think, and uh, they, they look good. I haven't ridden on them yet. I will put a note up in the corner to tell you what I think of how they ride. And she also put in some uh, a headlight upgrade. And I, I, I don't remember what those are called. I'll put what those are called up here in the corner as well, as well as some photos. Maybe I will run a separate video on those all together. So, all right, well, let's go uh, check out what Jake's doing. All right, so I'm here with Jake, and he's installing the intercooler on my daughter's car. And I wanted to uh, introduce you and let Jake tell you a little bit about his company, when he started, and what his future looks like as far as what he plans to do with it, because it's a small business working out of his personal garage at this moment. Go ahead. Yeah, so I'm Jake with Bond Performance. Um, I've been doing this on the sides for about three years now. Uh, in addition to my aviation job, my aircraft mechanic for a major airline currently. Um, kind of at a crossroads there, so this may become my full-time thing. Um, still haven't decided that yet, but I've been moving forward with expanding the product line. So I've got two different intercooler options, and those are available for the Mark 7 GLI, Mark 7 and 7.5, GTI, the Golf, and the Golf R, and I also have a full suit of exhaust parts for all of those cars except for the R. Uh, if any of you happen to be a Golf R or Audi S3 owner out there, I am still trying to track down a local to the Charlotte area all-wheel drive MQB car to use for development, which has uh, logistically been kind of a hassle, but uh, we do have the intercooler option for that car for those of you watching. So. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward installation. Uh, it goes together in half the time of a direct replacement, and you're really splitting hairs uh, performance-wise, which I guess once this car has a turbo upgrade, you guys can kind of do a comparison between the two. <laughs> Seeing <laughs> yes. as you've got the direct replacement replacement APR, uh, which is you know one of my main competitors mm -hmm. uh, with this front mount intercooler. So yeah, just kind of working through it and Hope you guys enjoy the video. Now, what, what are the odds? I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. I, I know as far as an exhaust for this car, the, the Golf Mark 7, you don't currently have one that you mass produce, but you can build it right on the car. So it's not like you can't do one, but what are the odds of you making a jig when you're done with this so that you'd be able to make them mass produce? Is it really not worth it because there's not enough demand or what do you think? Oh, uh, I mean, we could use this video as kind of a test to see what kind of interest there is. I do have a downpipe and a midpipe option. I actually just shipped one out last week for, okay. for a, one, a 180 Golf. So there there are options out there. However, I don't have a full cat back at this time. Sure. Uh, but yeah, that's something I'd definitely be willing to do. I'll show you some B-roll of these jigs that he makes. And they're, it's welder speak, but it's basically like a little, a bunch of, I'm speaking plain term here, a bunch of blocks and widgets welded to a platform that he can then follow with pipe and say, all right, here's 
this part. It's almost like a, a file cabinet over here where he's got all these different jigs where he can say, oh, I'm going to build this, so here's this jig. It's kind of cool. He would say it differently than I just did. What so, would you say? <laughs> so, so basically, it, it affords me the ability to create something on the car and then build the fixture around it in such a way that each that I produce on the fixture is an exact copy within thousandths of an inch. So when I ship an intercooler to California, I know that they're going to have the exact same perfect fitment as if I had built it on their car here in the shop in South Carolina. Oh yeah, that reminds me, whenever he did my exhaust, you know, we did it here in the shop, but he knew, either because of a jig or measurements, if he ships it to you, if you tell him that you have a, a factory down pipe or an APR down pipe or whatever down pipe, not necessarily all of them, but some of them, that he can make sure that what he sends you will fit to that product that you already have. Yeah, so I'm the only manufacturer out there accommodating other aftermarket parts to truly customize the experience to your car. So the intercooler kits, um, most aftermarket charge pipes can be accommodated with the downpipe, um, most other catbacks can be accommodated and vice versa with my catback going with other brands downpipes. I've got extensive notes on eliminating the reducers. So if you've got a three inch downpipe, you have a full true three inch system with all the required hardware included and no guesswork for trying to rig up a, a connector piece, which you know, you'd be left in that boat if all you right. with somebody else's mix and match aftermarket parts. All right, so uh, I forgot to, I meant to say this earlier, but I saw something shiny and said something else instead. Comment below if you've got a Mark 7 Golf. I, I guess I can specifically say what the single side exhaust, because that's really what this is. It's a basic 1AT Golf. If you're interested in pursuing that kind of an, an exhaust upgrade, that would tell him whether or not it's worth his while to make a jig and, uh, and then just make it more widely available. Otherwise, we're st still probably going to, possibly going to come here and uh, have them build one for us, even if it's just on the car and we drive off with it. The progress is a little slower because we're working with her budget instead of mine. <laughs> so uh, it ain't going to be immediate, but comment below if it's something you think you'll chase. And as another option, if you do have a 1.8 T Golf, the GTI balance is a direct bolt on. And if you, yes. if you did that modification, my GTI suit will fit the Golf. Oh yeah, yeah. So it, it wouldn't be a full redevelop of the system the same aggressive, less aggressive, and valved could be a potential option for the Golf. Yeah. The, the only section that would need re-engineered would be just the axle back portion. So since you said valved, I'm gonna have to put a photo over this to show you this really interesting valved exhaust that he does for the GTI and the R, is that correct? Or is I, the R already something else? The R comes factory with the valve system, okay. and I, I haven't been able to get one in here. To, All right. To put so my spin on it yet, I'll so. show it to you. I was so tempted to get it, but I just couldn't justify the cost for my purposes. It, it's it's too expensive for me to have on my car. <laughs> it, it is. The, the valve cat bags <laughs> takes 24 hours of my time to build. Yeah, yeah. Just so the cat bags, it's something so. else. So the the guys that have it are uh, truly holding on to something very unique. There's only two in the world. Oh, nice. So uh, if you're the kind of person that wants to have something one off, uh, you could be serial number three and all right a pretty exclusive club there but I, I won't lie it does come at a pretty steep price and the way inflation and shipping issues and material costs are going prices are they haven't gone up yet i've been holding out but, mm -hmm. uh, prices are probably going to go up unfortunately yeah i could see that uh back to your comment about the gti balance if it's in your budget to swap out your rear just a balance, not the whole bumper, yeah, we, right? We, we could show them later in the clip. It's just the I'll show you a B-roll. I should, should be a I forgot platform. it is just the plastic piece and not the whole bumper like it used to be. So if you swap that out, then you can just go right with the GTI exhaust with the dual uh, tip cutout. Yeah, so. so no painting or anything required on that either. I didn't even think the, of that. It's an unpainted piece. See, that's why he's in the business so, and I'm not. So for those of you that your wheels are turning, now that we've mentioned this, the Golf R is not interchangeable. So. If you want to go from a Golf or a GTI to quad tips, you would need to go after market in that case. Well, and also Mark 7.5 and, and 7 is not interchangeable either, right? Because that spacing is also yeah, different. 2018 and newer, the facelifted exhaust tips are an inch further apart, and the bumper cover itself is different. Okay. So 
Mark 7s stick to Mark 7s, 7.5s stick with those, and everything's interchangeable. No cross-pollination. Although, although I don't believe that, that, did they have a 7.5 Golf in the U.S.? That's a trivia question for you guys. Um, well, yeah, I don't even know what, I mean, because they're still selling the Golf, I just don't know if it's... Stateside, it, they discontinued it, so that's... Not that's, yet. The, uh, the base Golf is, there's a Golf S only for okay. 2021. I think it's even still on the website. Definitely for 2020. So it's not completely discontinued yet, but they haven't it, killed it, yet. It, it will be. It's on the chopping block. But you're right. I don't. I haven't noticed if that is. It seems to me like it would be a 7.5 because that way they wouldn't have to keep two fender sets and bumper sets in production. Yeah. I, Comment I honestly, below I if you know the answer yeah, to that. Yeah, maybe one of you guys own one. But I honestly, <laughs> this is the first 1.8 T Golf that's been here ever. So. Um, she, she's serial number one for the. Now she thinks she's got a she's got a unicorn. <laughs> That's my daughter Diana. So, uh, all right, let's get back to work. Or I'll let him get back to work. I'm just fooling around here. So, all right, see ya. As I set up for these recordings, I realized that I forgot to. Uh, I've never really talked about Diana's car because it was bone stock except for. A set of wheels that I gave to her and some stickers and very suddenly when she came back from her deployment she swapped in some coilovers and now she has an intercooler and here in a couple of days she's going to get a tune and so I will do another video about her car I've been trying to get some recording of her driving behind me or in front of me and We've been in a lot of traffic, and so that's been a little difficult. But uh, I think her, I think her car looks pretty good. The ride height looks good. It's maybe a little low for my taste, but I think she wants to come down in the back just a little bit more. Yeah, I think I talk about this just a little bit in the main video. So let me send you back to there. Okay, we're wrapped up. Uh, it just took a lot longer than I expected, than we expected. The Mark 7 Golf, and only the Golf, requires some trimming of the lower grill. And we could have notched it forward to get it to fit in there, but we just decided it was easier and faster to just cut the whole thing out. And my daughter loves the look. It was a, a little less work and not quite as tedious, but there is some trimming to do back here. And Jake tells me that... Uh, Mark 7's, Mark 7 Golfs are his lowest selling. In fact, she's the only one that's ever done this. So that makes her the guinea pig. She's the guinea pig. So through her guinea pigging, we have discovered that front mount intercoolers do not fit so well behind this without trimming this away. Could we have left that, that in this grill here and just kept on notching it forward or does it eventually have to come out? Based on what I can see, the grill the grid pattern of the lower grill could have remained it would have just took really really extensive basically milling to take yeah the whole, if you can picture it being a 3d part the whole back edge of it mm -hmm. forward an entire inch so if you spread out that grid pattern into a straight line it would be 20 feet or so yeah removing a half inch so just excessive trimming how many times do you think you two took off this this bumper 15 uh, over a dozen without it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on and off, on and off. Trim, 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 trim. Put it back on and, and see what fits. So, uh, but again, this it's only necessary on the Golf, not the Golf R. I assure you, you do not have to trim a Golf R lower grill to make this fit. Nothing on the GTI. On the GTI. You didn't do anything on your GLI either, did Nothing. you? The GLI has actually got the best clearance. Awesome. You, you know, you're the right. They, you, they do because they've got such a huge overhang up front. So just the golf so don't have a cow if you see this and think that a golf r requires this it, it isn't necessary does this look for you maybe maybe not she loves it that's all that matters and if you like the open look here for your golf then go for it there's one last tidbit on the trimming itself um so i won't take credit for this um this is trial and error that other people on the forums and on Facebook and even customers of mine have revealed to me. So the easiest solution to figure out these clearance issues would have been to simply remove this lower grill altogether. 
just disconnect it from the bumper. It is a separate piece. It's a different textured piece of plastic. But in doing that, you're taking all the rigidity out of the bumper. So all the guys that you see on Facebook and the forums with broken bumpers, it's because they completely removed that lower grill, where we instead trimmed all of the grid pattern from the center of it, but all the structure that actually gives the bumper its strength still remains because this is a three-dimensional part wrapped around behind all of these lips. So this is still structurally sound to not have to worry about the weight of itself or wind damaging the bumper. <laughs> or flapping in the wind. Yeah, yeah, or flapping in the wind. It's still just as rigid. When I did before. that, I felt the car actually move on the lift. So yeah. it's, it's uh, uh, not that I'm terribly strong, but I did put some good force on that to show you that. So uh, it's strong. So yeah, that's that's my last two cents. If you do like the look, because I have seen people trim GTIs and R's just for the look, not for clearance. And that's something to keep in mind that you don't want to simply remove it. You want to take the time to go ahead and trim it. And while it is a lot of work, it does really change the look of the car versus one that yes. has the grid. This is how you turn Mustangs away. They just take the long way home when they see the obvious front mount interface. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I catch them doing it all the time. I don't have anything else to add. I appreciate you being here as always, and I will see you next time. I will share another video about the car with the other upgrades, maybe in uh, two or three weeks. We'll see. All right, take care.